the second talk. Okay, the second talk in this session is low cost constant round MDC combining DMR and oblivious transport by Kam Heiji, Peter Shaw, and Eduardo Sonia Vasquez, and Eduardo is our speaker. Thank you, Professor So, yeah, this is great work with uh, Carmit from Maryland University, Peter, who is also in the room. Um, yeah, that's getting it. So, First, I'm going to introduce what is MDC because maybe most of the people in the room are more interested in the oblivious round stuff. So I will go smoothly from JavaScript circuits to DMR, which is a multi-party version uh, of Java. And then I will speak about the results in our paper. Uh, first, we have a transformation from any uh, MDC protocol for binary circuits to uh, DMR gravel circuit, so it's a way of getting those in rounds. Uh, then we realize also about some robustness property of this carbon DMR, and finally we have a instantiation of this uh, compiler using the NLP. Okay, so multi-party computation, the classical example is that you have this uh, set of parties, uh, they are millionaires and they want to know who is the richest. Uh, so, if we have uh, some trusted party, uh, this problem would be solved very easily because then the parties just have to tell this uh, uh, trust uh, person how much money they have. Then, when the trusted party has all of this, uh, she can compute, oh, Alice is the richest here, and she just tells everybody. Uh, so, here there are no problems at all, even if you have. Uh, misbehaving parties because they are just outsourcing all this computation to the trust uh, party. But now the real world is sometimes not so nice. Uh, so when we don't have this trust or party, uh, we have some interactive algorithm, which is our MPC protocol. And uh, now the problems uh, we face is that, yeah, we have these uh, malicious parties taking part in the protocol and they might not follow uh, what you want them to do. Uh, and the way we want to capture security is by saying that this uh, is indistinguishable from the first case, this idea of what the uh, So there's many flavors of uh, multi-party computation. And this talk we will focus on Boolean circuits. We will also work on this uh, offline online setting or pre-processing online setting. So in the preprocessing phase, uh, the parties produce some uh, corrected randomness, uh, independent of the inputs. You put all the heavy work there, and once you have that, you have a very efficient learning phase. Uh, the adversary is uh, static, which means that it's going to corrupt the parties at the beginning of the protocol. Uh, malicious, which means that they can deviate however they want. Uh, we assume also a dishonest majority. Um, yeah, within the setting, what we want to do is that we want to get constant rounds. And we want concrete efficiency. Okay, so if we start with uh, the classic construction of Yao for uh, two party computation, uh, you have Alice and Bob, they have some inputs x1 and x2, and they want to compute some circuit C on them. So Alice uh, would garble uh, this uh, circuit C, this is some description of the circuit, uh, she's going to send to Bob then both parties are going to engage in this uh, input encoding protocol. Uh, Bob gets encoded inputs, and with that, he can evaluate the circuit, and then just send back the result to us. So this is the same EMS case, and um, here what happens is that uh, from these encoded inputs and the circuit, Bob cannot learn about the inputs of Alice. And Alice doesn't know anything about Bob's inputs apart from the result of the computation. Now in BMR, uh, things are pretty similar. Uh, the parties also are going to garble uh, some circuit together. Then they are going to encode their respective inputs, private inputs. And once they have this, they can locally evaluate this garble circuit that they have produced in the BMR. Now we also have uh, some problems if we compare with uh, Java. So in Java, we could have just uh, one party doing the garbling. But this is not the case here, because 
we cannot trust any single party. We are in a dishonest majority setting. Um, we need to do these steps of carving and coding the <coughs> using um, an external MPC protocol. And the good thing, though, is that we can garble all of the gates in parallel. So this is how we're going to get uh, constant Okay. So yeah, this is the hardest step out of this uh, garbling and input encoding. The hard bit is how to garble the gates. And this is what we're going to focus on for the rest of the talk, well, for the next minutes. Uh, so yeah, these are the costs of uh, garbling a single gate in BMR. Uh, since it was proposed in 1990. Uh, so the first uh, proposal was uh, required a lot of zero knowledge proofs uh, for some to random uh, generators. Uh, this uh, then was a bit overlooked until 2015 uh, when Lindelow uh, did the garbling using the speeds protocol, uh, which required a linear number of um, modifications. Uh, to garble every every gate. Uh, then the year after uh, in PCC uh, with uh, Lindell and Smart, we have uh, our paper doing the garbling using some automorphic encryption. Uh, we still have uh, some overhead uh, due to some uh, zero knowledge proofs that we did uh, for the ciphertext. So this was a quadratic overhead that's also present in the previous works. Uh, now in this in this talk, uh, we just need to do a single uh, multiplication in the underlying uh, <coughs> protocol to garble an AND gate. Uh, we rely only on oblivious transfer and the external MC protocol, and we also achieve uh, the free XOR property. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I should say yeah. Um, concurrent work uh, by Juan Ranelucci and Katz. Uh, presented in CCS this year, uh, they achieve uh, similar results. Okay, so yeah, starting smoothly, how to garble an gate with Yao, you have your truth table, you have input wires U and V, and output wire W. Uh, the parties are going to pick two random keys for uh, each wire, then they encrypt the truth table, and permute uh, the entries according to some secret bits. In BMR, uh, it is very similar. Uh, the difference now is that basically we have n copies of everything. So instead of having two keys per wire, we have two keys per party per wire. Um, we are going to do the same. We encrypt the truth table, uh, but now instead of encrypting a single key, we are encrypting n keys. And we use n keys for that as well, well two n keys. And yeah, each party knows uh, a pair of keys for everyone. Okay. Um, yeah, once we have a subscription, we do the permutation as in Yam. Um, so, the encryption in VMR, don't be scared about the math here. Uh, it's uh, quite easy. So, imagine you want to encrypt one of these entries, so you want to encrypt one of, of the keys. So, if you want to encrypt the key for party J over here, you are just going to mask it with this uh, pseudo random value that you obtain with F, where it is up here F. And once you have encrypted one of the keys, you have to encrypt the other. So it's the same thing in times. Uh, the good thing is that these PRFs can be computed outside of uh, MPC world, and then you just this becomes just a local operation. You just have to do some XOR. So this is how you how you how you encrypt uh, one of the entries. And one thing to note about this is that this encryption is malleable. So if you look at it, if you have the encryption of X here and you add some value y to it, you get the encryption of x plus y. And this is something that we're going to use. Uh, so yeah, now the whole garbling of a gate, once you have uh, your encryption of uh, this key for value zero, uh, we are going to add this product on the right. So if you look at it, you have some, uh, these are some bits on the right, some secret permutation bits. Um, you have those multiplied with some uh, offset RJ. So this offset RJ is what allows to have the free XOR property. 
uh, we define the keys uh, for value 1 on each wire to be the key for value 0 plus this subset. And because of this uh, malleability that we showed before, uh, here we're going to get either the encryption of the key for value 0, if uh, the bits on the right are 0, or the key for value 1 if that is set to 1. So, how to carpal and gate? Uh, the parties are going to uh, do some coin tossing to get these secret permutation bits. Once they have that, they are going to compute the shares of the product that we're missing. So, it's all bit uh, bit products or bit string products. And once uh, they have that and the, the encryption of the entries, they can produce the, the carpal gate and the carpal circuit. They can do this in parallel. Uh, so, a bit more graphically, yeah, the parties are going to use uh, some multiplication in the underlying MVC protocol. And then to do the bit stream products, they are going to use a correlated OT, which is very efficient in all the extensions. There is some caveat here uh, that we need to check consistency between these uh, two smaller uh, protocols. So, we need to make sure that the uh, lambda values in input to the correlated OT correspond to the ones uh, using the multiplications. But this is very efficient. Uh, this is just some random combination of values and you can check the details on the thing. So yeah, this is the first result. Uh, this transformation, you get your favorite MPC protocol in F2 and now you can get constant rollouts by doing this. Okay. Uh, the second result, uh, when, we're, when we start proving uh, this protocol, we realize uh, that BMR is actually quite uh, robust, and I'm going to explain what I mean with, uh, with robust now. Uh, so the idea is that as we have all these copies of the keys of each party in the carpal circuit, um, now if the adversary uh, gives some, uh, some input value on some circuit, uh, to a party, and that party garbles the circuit, send them to the adversary. Uh, now we can let the adversary modify the circuit in any way he wants. Um, this, uh, in particular, uh, this uh, modification we can capture as an additive error. And now when the parties are going to evaluate the, the circuit, uh, they are either going to get the actual value, or everything is going to result in an abort that also does not leak any information about the inputs. So we are, we are safe. And why, why, why is this the case? Uh, well, again, if you think about this uh, malleable encryption scheme that we had, uh, this error that the FSR can introduce can only change the output if it manages to switch uh, the key. So if I'm an honest party, I'm party J, uh, in order to, to cheat me, you would have to guess my offset RJ, which is private, and, and I already know it. So this becomes negligible, as long as R is long enough. And in previous works, uh, it was allowed to introduce these kind of uh, errors uh, in the carbon, but not after seeing the carbon circuit. Also, the reductions to the security of the PRF were not very tight. Um, the whole circuit was required to be authenticated, whereas in our case, we just need to authenticate the smaller uh, products. Uh, and the third result uh, that we have is um, uh, an instantiation of this uh, garbling using 10 -OT. So 10 -OT is a, it's a protocol, a multi-party uh, protocol for Boolean circuits. Uh, it was described in 2015. And uh, it was also optimized uh, recently in the concurrent work by Wang et al. And the, the only thing you need to know about this is that uh, in order to achieve malicious security, uh, they use this information theoretic max that look like this. So in order to authenticate the value x, there is uh, some max key uh, that has some values uh, k and r, where r is some global value. And now if we use this global value r of tiny t to be the offset uh, that is required for Fritzor, we are basically solving two problems at the same time. We get the active security of TNT and the offset for the offset for the uh, 
um, if we look at what we had before, so this is what we had for any uh, MPC protocol for binary circuits. Uh, now, if we use Tiny OT, we can basically drop all of these because we, we have it. We have it already within the multiplication of Tiny OT. So basically, one multiplication in Tiny OT is one gravel gate in the end. Um, going to the efficiency, uh, this is uh, how it has evolved over the past years. So, speeds VMR was uh, presented in crypto 2015, and here when we say mascot VMR, is, this hasn't been an actual work, but you could think of uh, doing the same thing as in speeds VMR, but using the recent protocol of mascot, which is like a more efficient version of, of speeds. Uh, so the improvement of uh, over the previous uh, works uh, was small, but there was some improvement. Whereas now uh, we are going basically from gigabytes uh, to megabytes. So this is uh, the communication cost for covering the AES circuit. Um, we have uh, for three parties we need uh, 15 megabytes. For 10 we need 67. Um, if you look at the most efficient wonder. Uh, they would require uh, almost 4 gigabytes uh, for three parties or 55 for 10. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, we have uh, constant rounds uh, for your favorite uh, MPC protocol for Boolean circuits on so free. The only overhead that you have is this correlated OTs. So if you have a security parameter overhead, um, if you are willing to use uh, Tiny OT to get more efficiency, uh, it gets even better. We have also improved the, uh, the understanding of the security of VMR. Uh, now we have this unauthenticated circuit uh, that gives us a slightly better online phase. And we can think of different open problems. So can we further uh, optimize the guarding of VMR? So as I said, we have n copies of its uh, key. Uh, on a garbled entry. So can we can we further reduce this? Because then it scales uh, four times the number of parts it's fifty parameters. So it's slightly big. And also we have to do a quadratic number of PRF evaluations to garble, which is not very bad with the SNI on hardware, but still gets into the maybe we would like to optimize. Uh, how about TNT? Can we optimize TNT and then just plug the improvement here, or can we think of any other MPC protocol that, for example, exploits the parallelism we have when carbon VMR? Can we design some efficient uh, active secure MPC protocol to do this? Uh, so that, that's it on my side. I will take any questions. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Okay, thanks, the speaker again.